Yeah. Hold up, hold up. Get right with you. I'm gonna get right with you. Bad bitches, fuck up, then dismiss it. Bang. Bang, really hit it. Take no pictures. And to that. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. So today we're talking about how to perform a header with power and accuracy. So we're diving into five different types of headers: offensive, defensive, flick on, glancing, and diving headers. So without further ado, guys, I'm freezing right now. Let's go ahead and begin today's video. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Get right with you. All right, so before we start here, guys, and again, it's very important just understand and comprehend that this hair technique is not as important as having the right mentality. So if you guys are lacking commitment and bravery and just courage to win balls, you're not going to win any headers, period. So first and foremost, guys, heading comes down to your mentality and having the right train of thought. Now, how do you perform a header? Now, this is a pretty common question I get on Instagram and stuff and YouTube, but I honestly haven't had time to answer this excuse me, question to its fullest capacity and fullest extent because it's a pretty advanced question. You wouldn't think so because heading seems like it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but you'd be surprised how many just young players lack the basic form to perform a great header. So to start out, we're going to talk about some of the points that cover all headers, and then we'll dive into more specifics of each header after that. But the first thing you guys have to know is that you have to look at the ball to perform a good header. Now I'm not saying guys you have to have your eyes fixating the ball from the moment it leaves your opponent's foot when it makes contact with your head. I'm not saying that at all. That's kind of over the top uh, too much in my opinion. All I'm saying guys is make sure you have a general sense of where your opponents are and your teammates are but don't get too distracted by your surroundings as you risk losing the flight path of the ball. But the most important takeaway from this point in general is make sure you guys have your eyes open until the moment of contact or impact with the ball. Next, we have planting your feet. Uh, this is one that seems like it's pretty obvious and straightforward and common sense, but apparently it's not because to this day, in November of 2019, I still see players jumping from their toes and their heels, which looks super awkward and strange and very weird, but it happens a lot still. But having said that, this bad form results in lack of power in maximum output. So make sure you guys are just focusing on fixating your foot fully on the ground before jumping as that'll help when it comes to creating more power and accuracy for your header. Number three is bending your knees. Uh, having a slight knee bend really helps when it comes to maintaining balance, builds power, momentum, and helps when it comes to increasing how high you can jump significantly. I challenge you guys to have a no knee bend, having straight legs when it comes to jumping, and then actually bending your knees while jumping because you see a dramatic difference when you compare the two. Number four is having to bend to your back. So the more lean and bend you have to your back, the more power you ultimately generate because you're building up momentum. So think of it like a rubber band. The more you pull back the band, the more power it'll generate. But there is a limit to how far you should pull back the band or how far you should go down when it comes to performing a header. More than five to 10 degrees is more than enough to create enough power to perform a quality header. Next we have the timing, and timing is absolutely everything when it comes to performing a quality header. Uh, you can mess up all the other points we just talked about, but if you mess up the timing aspect, you are screwed. So, if you head the ball too soon, the balls will come off your head like a modified flick-on, which is not what you want at all, it's pretty embarrassing. And then if you head the ball too late, you're going to become target practice for the opposing team. So it's very important again to get this timing aspect down because it is everything when it comes to performing a quality header. Number six is moving the head forward. The more rapidly you can move your head forward to strike and hit the ball, the more power and velocity you will create. So that kind of goes without being said, but don't exaggerate this form, guys, and this movement. I'm not saying to detach your head from your body. I'm not saying that at all. Um, all I'm saying is move your head maybe four or five degrees backward to create, again, more velocity and more power for your header. And number seven is the contact. Now we make contact with the ball, guys. We're not trying to use our cyber head or the top of the head. We're just using the forehead. Don't get this confused, guys. Don't think it's like some magical formula. It's just the middle of the forehead. That's it. Plain and simple. Don't overthink it. It's the biggest, most solid surface in the head. So in turn, it'll generate the most power and control for us. <laughs> Moving
moving on to the five different types of headers. Uh, we talked about uh, kind of the fundamentals and basics of all headers, but now it's time to discuss and, uh, and talk about kind of more specifically each type of header, what it entails, what to do, and what not to do. So to begin with, we'll talk about defensive and offensive headers. So the attacking and just offensive technique is very different than defensive header. When defending, the purpose of headers is to clear the ball up and away from the danger zone. Heading the ball high gives your teammates a chance to recognize where they need to be defensively, and heading the ball far denies immediate threat on goal. But when attacking and performing offensive headers, the focus should be on hitting the ball downward towards the goal line, keeper's feet, and bottom corners. You want to make sure we're heading downward because it makes it harder for the keeper to react and make a quality save. But uh, just so this video isn't dragging on, guys, I'm going to kind of speed up the process of going through these points. So here are a few of the main uh, takeaways from the offensive and attacking header. You want to meet the ball at the highest points, coming down over top of the ball to head it down. Make sure you're coming towards the ball, making some sort of contact, so lunging forward, not just staying still, but moving forward toward the ball. Tuck your chin down, keep your body square on goal, arms up to protect yourself, push through the ball, and then try to be as creative as you can and unpredictable in the box with your run as possible. And for defensive headers, uh, make sure you guys keep your eyes below the ball so the moment you make contact with your forehead, your head is moving upwards. Power up and through the ball. Hit the ball for height and distance. Uh, make sure you guys aren't coming over top of the opponent. Go straight up, not straight over. And lastly, make sure you guys aren't flaring your arms out. <laughs> Try to knock somebody out. But having said that, that covers offensive and defensive headers. And now we have the flick-on. The flick-on is used for altering the play in the ball and will keep you going in the same direction in order to find a teammate behind you. Often it's used by an attacker at the near post trying to flick the ball on to someone in the middle of the box, or it's used off a punter goal kick to put a teammate in and behind the defense. In most cases, you'll be jumping with the ball, keeping your eyes open until the last possible seconds before lifting your chin and flattening out your forehead. This type of header doesn't require any power, as the idea is to use the speed of the ball to your advantage. The most important takeaway from this technique is to make sure your head is following the course of the ball. Now we have the glancing header. So this is a header that you just slightly touch the ball and redirect it at an angle. So it's most commonly used for directing the ball on goal after a cross or corner kick. When compared to the offensive and attacking header, the glancing header has much less power. As instead of striking the ball head on, you're making contact with your forehead on the side of the ball. But once you start practicing this movement, guys, and begin wrapping your head around the ball and finishing past 90 degrees is when you know you've mastered this form. And the last header we have is the diving. And diving header is used in most situations when the ball is being driven across the goal and the player didn't think or believe that his foot would reach it or didn't think his foot would generate enough power to either clear it or direct it on goal. Preparation ahead of the ball, make sure you square your shoulders when possible, and then assume a slightly crouched position. Move toward the ball while anticipating the flight path, and dive parallel to the ground to meet it. Make sure you tilt your head back, eyes open, mouth closed, and neck firm. Once you make contact with the ball, make sure you extend your arms forward to break your fall. Now with all these headers guys, if you have the proper technique and form, it shouldn't matter if you're five foot six or six foot six, you should still be able to win the ball. But having said that guys, uh, if your opponent is somebody that has the same intelligence and the same football education as you, and he's a foot taller than you, you're gonna be up for a challenge. But you can make up for your lack of heights by having a stronger core and greater vertical jump. There's a thousand and one ways to practice heading guys, but I recommend you start small and work your way up. Uh, don't start picking balls in your partner's head if he's a beginner. One mistime jump and one over pump ball will leave you never wind ahead of pull ever again. But having said that, that's going to wrap up today's video guys. Hope you liked it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you smash that like button, comment, like, share. And as always, I'll check you guys in the next video. Deuces! Oh.